In 1971, the FCC accidentally changed the entire landscape of television with the passage of the Primetime Access Rule and the Financial Interest and Syndication Rules. The two rule sets opened up one hour of primetime every evening that had to be programmed by the local affiliates instead of the national networks and also forced the networks to spin their syndication arms off into independent companies. The FCC hoped that this would result in locally produced programming for every market, but instead it led to a boom in first-run syndication, that is, syndicated programming that skips network broadcast and goes straight to selling to individual affiliates. What had been a market for networks to sell their reruns suddenly exploded with original children's shows, variety programs, sitcoms, and particularly in the 90s, action and dramas. Even major brands went into first-run syndication. That's where you would find Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. And, of course, in the middle of this was Dracula the series, starring today's subject, Jordy Johnson. Jordy Johnson was born in 1953 in Claire's home, Alberta, Canada. He spent his early adulthood working in the sawmill that his family had founded in the 1920s, breaking logs into two-by-four studs. The sawmill may have been the family business, but Johnson did not have a particular desire to pursue a career in the lumber industry. He earned a BFA from the University of Calgary, where he studied acting and directing and learned multiple styles, including Commedia dell'arte and classic Shakespearean performance. Upon graduation, he joined an improv company and toured British Columbia, Alberta, and Vancouver Island. 1980 found Jordy moving to Toronto, where he established himself as a fixture on the live theater stage. He would make his screen debut in 1983's Skullduggery, an infamous entry in the early 80s satanic panic-inspired media that features a young man driven to kill by Satan's influence and his love of a Dungeons & Dragons-like role-playing game. Johnson would go on to pick up roles in first-run syndication dramas, including the 80s reboot of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, as well as roles in made-for-TV movies. The 90s saw a boom in television production in the Toronto area, as many of the aforementioned first-run syndication comedies and dramas took advantage of the ample funding they could find in Canada. Not only did Jordy take on the starring role in Dracula the series, but he would spend the 90s guest-starring in The Ray Bradbury Theatre, Kung Fu The Legend Continues, Free Willy, there was a first-run syndicated drama based on Free Willy, Forever Night, Tech War, Psy Factor, Highlander the Raven. This man's career was basically my teenage years in the 1990s in front of my television. In 2003, Jordy Johnson was supposed to make his American theatrical debut for the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco, playing Torvald Helmer in A Doll's House but he was thwarted by nothing less than the United States' war on terror. Increasingly tight immigration laws resulted in him being denied a work visa, and he had to be replaced on short notice by actor Stephen Caffrey. While he may not have made it onto the American stage then, Johnson continues to frequent the Canadian theater scene and can be seen frequently on television, recently appearing in Murdoch Mysteries, Frankie Drake Mysteries, and starring as Detective Duquesne in the miniseries Acceptable Risk. He also appears as Professor Freund in the 2018 biopic of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, On the Basis of Sex. You're him, aren't you? Why, whatever do you mean? 
You're Dracula. No, I'm Millie Vanilli. Of course I'm Dracula. And you know what? I enjoy being me. The Canadian production Dracula the Series filmed in Luxembourg. It ran for a single season right at the opening of the first-run syndication action-adventure explosion. It was the brainchild of Glenn Davis, who had previously written for Alfred Hitchcock Presents and would go on to write for Man and Machine and create the shows Power Play, 1-800-Missing, and Aftermath, and his frequent collaborator William Lauren, who also developed the television series South Beach. The producers, Phil Bedard and Larry Lalonde, would later go on to produce syndicated action staples John Woo's Once a Thief and Kung Fu The Legend Continues. In the first episode of the series, we are introduced to Maximilian and Christopher Townsend, two typical American boys who have had to move all the way across the world when their mother takes a job that requires an awful lot of travel through Europe. She leaves them in the care of their uncle, Gustav Van Helsing. Yes, descended from that Van Helsing. It isn't long before the boys find themselves drawn into Gustav's quest to rid the world of vampires, aided as well by local kid Sophie Metternich, played by a young Mia Kirshner. Their main antagonist is none other than Big D himself, Daddy Dracula. Man, I should not have called him Big D, who has given himself a makeover for the modern world. He's no longer Count Dracula, but rather Alexander Lucard, and he is the billionaire CEO behind a massive multinational corporation. As Van Helsing puts it, Dracula's evil used to be contained to his local region, but modern technology and finance have now allowed him to become a danger to the entire world. I'm on the last page. Would you mind killing this little squirt for me? You don't scare me, Lucard. I'll hang him outside. Let the birds peck out his eyes. And the lizards chew on his toes. Now this guy scares me. The half-hour episodic series appears to have been developed with the after-school crowd in mind, as it has a similar pace to young adult horror shows like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark. It's a more family-friendly action scarefest with a lot of comedy in the mix. I've mentioned that several of the actors on this list are very tall, so let's start with something purely physical about Jordy Johnson that immediately makes him stand out among the crowd. He's blonde. Do you realize how incredibly rare it is to find a blonde Dracula? It's just a little, purely physical difference, but it actually contributes a lot to the feeling of this Dracula as a slick, modern, and corporate entity. His entire look, his manner, his bearing, all suggest someone at home at the country club or sailing on his yacht with other movers and shakers. Most takes on a modern-day Dracula like to focus on the idea of a fish out of water, a man out of his own time, but Jordy Johnson's Dracula is menacing in that he has kept his ear to the ground for all of these years. He knows exactly what it means to be a predator in a world of modern technology, and if he weren't in a show for younger audiences, he probably wouldn't have so much trouble from these meddling kids. The series does play fast and loose at times with vampire mythology, but it's interesting to note that this is one of the few Dracula-based stories since Nosferatu in which sunlight is not lethal to vampires, which actually helps to make Dracula even more threatening because he can exercise the powers of a CEO in the daytime and a vampire at night. Jordy Johnson relishes playing the pure evil of Alexander Lucard, sliding easily from smug privilege into absolute snarling rage and, when appropriate, chewing the scenery with the best of them. How are you like? I want my MTV. Well, you can have it if you own a satellite. How else would I watch Young MC? You're into rap and hip-hop and some ska. I'll tell you what, Chris, here's my card. Call my people if ever you get homesick for a little rap. Among the guest stars to appear on Dracula was Geraint Wynn Davies, who played fellow vampire and longtime friend to Lucard, 
Klaus Helsing. Some of the most fun to be found in the series is when the two characters are on screen together. They have fantastic comic chemistry, and they genuinely seem to be having fun playing these roles. Davies would take a starring role two years later in the first-run syndicated series Forever Night as vampire detective Nick Knight, a much more brooding and troubled character than Klaus Helsing. Jordy Johnson would appear in two different episodes of Forever Night, once providing the voice of Dragon, and once playing the role of Jerry Tate, the slick and sleazy host of The Jerry Show, in the episode, My Boyfriend is a Vampire. Like I say, I was a teenager in the 90s, and shows like this were basically my bread and butter at the time. I would come home and I would watch Highlander, and I would watch Forever Night. And of course, everybody at school wanted to talk about Baywatch, which was also part of this first-run syndicated boom. But thinking about Dracula the series, what do you think of Jordy Johnson's performance in the series? What memories do you have about this 90s syndication boom drop into the comments down below and leave your story leave your thoughts and while you're at it leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also why not take a moment to share this video with a friend who might enjoy it after all sharing is caring or so i have been told until next time i am glenn williams i am the Film Optimist, and I am reminding you to watch like it means something. Take care.